I remember there was like a certain point where I like started to think about interviews in like a more collaborative way and not like I'm being tested. And I think that mentality shift has helped me to be like, okay, like I'm just simulating what it would be like to like work with somebody. Um, and so like, it's okay to sometimes like crack jokes. My name is Sophie. I'm an ex Facebook and Nextdoor engineer and now co founder at Formation. We are an engineering fellowship that prepares engineers from every walk of life for roles at the world's top tech companies. So, this is an interview series where I will be inviting some of our favorite role models in tech and putting them in the hot seat to do a mock interview with me. Throughout the interviews, we will also be pausing to offer some exclusive behind the scenes insight as to what we were thinking as both the interviewer and the interviewee. So our twist on this series is that for every interview, we are also creating a diversity scholarship that will directly support an engineer from an underrepresented background to land a top tier role in tech. I am absolutely thrilled to be opening this series with the amazing Mayugo. I will be conducting a pretty standard data structures and algorithms interview, and there's a lot of fun twists and conversations and lessons learned. Stick around to the end to hear about the Formation X Mayugo scholarship directly from Mayugo. Um, but in the meantime, let's get straight to the interview. Are you ready? Wait, did I find you? I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name's Mayuko. I'm a YouTuber and software engineer. Um, I make content on YouTube about the tech industry, software engineering careers, and my lifestyle. Um, but prior to that, I was working as a software engineer, specifically making iOS apps. So I've worked at Intuit and Patreon and Netflix. Um, and it's been a while since I've coded professionally, not going to lie, since like 2020. Uh, really actually kind of nervous to do this mock interview, but I'm really excited because I know that mock interviews are probably one of the scariest parts of like the technical interview. And uh, hopefully by you watching me stumble through this, <laughs> it gives you some confidence that uh, you can also do it too, because it's, it is a hard thing. It's a hard skill to learn, but it's a skill that you can learn with practice. So who, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for thanks for sharing. And thank you for, for being vulnerable with me. Um, Mayuko, are you ready? <laughs> ready as I'll ever be, but I'm, I'm yeah. here to have fun. So okay. <laughs> I'm excited. Awesome. So the question for today we're starting with, um, I try to theme it. Uh, for you. <laughs> Yay, love so it. <laughs> we are starting by creating a YouTube uh, channel as a class, mm -hmm. and we're going to start by implementing these three methods, um, upload, view, and top three videos. Mm -hmm. um, so upload is just going to take a name and a content, and the content is just going to be a string. It's going to be like a mock placeholder for a video. <laughs> we're not going to yeah. do real video processing in this interview. <laughs> Maybe the second half. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then view will just take the name of the video and then it will return the original string slash the video. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, we'll have a top three videos. So for each call to view, it will count as a single view. Uh, I know on YouTube, they also track that you're like watching the video for like 30 seconds. We don't have that requirement, um, but just returning the name of the top three most viewed videos on the channel. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, create a YouTube channel class. Okay, first question I have is Swift makes a uh, distinguishes between structs and classes, but you want a class specifically. Like, does that matter as a data type? Hmm. I mean, the reason why I brought it up to begin with was kind of to like show that I understand the difference between the two data types because structs mm -hmm. versus classes tends to be a, a like an interview question, and it didn't really seem like just based on the problem or the information you gave me in that that like I should lean one way or the other. Um, and so I kind of just like flipped a coin in my brain and I was just like, well, the prompt says class. So I'm just going to use class. <laughs> None of these interviews are ever enough time. When do you make quick decisions versus when do you actually like really think things through all the way? If the interviewer wants to revisit, they usually will. So I don't know if that's just like, I yeah, no, that's everyone would do that, but yeah. Now that I'm thinking back to like the clip, I think that like, I, I can see the like moment of like pause where you're like, okay, I think I'm going to choose this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably did that. <laughs> um, 
I think either is fine. Okay, um, cool. You will need to store some state. So as long as you mm-hmm, do mm-hmm. that, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think, I mean, with Swift, typically it's preferred to use structs because uh, they're passed by value instead of passed by reference and it's safer that way to pass around. But um, I think I'm just going to kind of go the like regular programming route a little bit and just make it a class for now, just for simplicity's okay. sake. Yeah. Um, okay. So create a YouTube channel class. I'm just going to call it YouTube channel or something like that. Camel case. Okay. And then just to kind of like uh, mock out the thing here. So name is a string, content is a string, and it doesn't return anything. Okay, so basically for a YouTube channel, um, basic for, it looks like there's gonna be some sort of uh, like representation of all the videos that are on the YouTube channel. And then we also need to keep track of the number of views per you, per channel as, or per, what is it? Per yeah. video as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out how I want to store that data type, um, uh, with technical interviews. The first thing that I always think about is like use a hash table because it's always going to be <laughs> the most performant. Um, so if I were just to use a hash table, I guess, what would the key value be? So var videos being of type, uh, I guess, like string, string to something. So I guess that's the question. What would I store? So since I need a store video name and then the view count um the video name is a string and then view count is likely an integer um but but then will a youtube channel ever have two videos of the same name is the question because the keys need to be unique Mm -hmm. um i'm gonna assume i don't have any like videos with two names on my channel because that's confusing to a viewer and I think that's true for most other channels. So is it okay if I assume that all the strings are going to be unique? It's not the best key I got out of it, but like. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, totally. Let's, uh, we can assume that they'll be unique. Okay, cool. Yeah. So then in that yeah. case. And that's a good point. Like you might want to um, like store it as an ID or something like that, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, any, um, like the second, I don't know, when you, when and this is part of like interviewing is that like that gives a little bit of insight into like software engineering thinking, not just like coding, right? Like there's, once you've built real products, there's like something in you that like automatically is like, ooh, story has <laughs> like name. And if I change yeah. the name. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, no. Cause I feel but like we can it's like, with yeah. products, most of the time, it's like, like, instead of a YouTube channel, you might have like the name of a product or a name of a person or something. And there's going to be a million John Smiths and like Jennifer Lee's and stuff. So like, yeah, strings are a little iffy. I, the second thing that I thought about was like, maybe it's a um, key value with a UUID to a tuple of string and int or something, or of just a UUID with a, like mm-hmm. a, a video class, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, which has a name and view, which actually in, in real life, I think that's what I would do Mm -hmm. uh, because videos also have so many other properties other than name and view. Mm -hmm. Um, what should I do? The easy thing or the right thing? (laughs) Um, okay. So this moment here, I think actually in hindsight is a little bit of a mistake in the interview. Uh, here you see Mayuko is only considering what she would do in real life and weighing the pros and cons in terms of time for her to implement it, uh, which she was not considering and should have at this point was how she was going to use this structure to solve the third uh, code function here. And you'll see later in the interview how this causes her some problems. So I think an important takeaway I, that I would have for this interview is to not start coding in an interview until you have a high level working approach for the whole problem and walk through tons of examples before even starting to code. I like how you made the distinction between software engineering brain and coding brain. Cause like yeah. software engineering <laughs> brain is like make a video object. Not yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. So then that's basically what I would do here, just initializing the videos function. Um, so then basically for upload, I'm basically s- like storing this new uh, video. Um, also, I guess like, what's the difference between the name and the content? Like the title of the video is different from the content, like string representing a video, or are they yeah. actually the same? Yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah. then the, for the purposes of this like scoped project like the way that we would call it is say like upload a day in the life of a software engineer yeah. <laughs> a day in the life of a software engineer would yeah. be like a valid input yeah that would be fine yeah okay cool um so then yeah I guess like if if this content string was like not a string and it was actual data representation it's like another reason for me to just make a video object so then it would have mm -hmm. the title the view count and also whatever the video representation is mm -hmm. um so that's like another pro for that option but i'm just gonna keep going with this for now because it's kind of a little simpler um so then basically i need to do like videos set i think name for name <laughs> uh I, i'm pretty sure that's the uh function to set something into a dictionary in swift <laughs> again very rusty with the syntax here but yeah i mean it doesn't have a return type so i feel like that's all that it would really do oh i guess one thing that i need to check is like does exist does a video already exist with the same name um because what if we upload two videos called a day in the life of a software engineer, then there would probably be need to be some sort of error handling, which then mm -hmm. is like, I would probably want to then change the method signature to like return, um, like a status. Return, yeah, a status or like, if it's, you know, if there's like some sort of networking or async operation involved in some sort of completion handler, um, or yeah. I could <laughs> say like throws. I think is the thing where it could mm -hmm. literally throw an error. So many different ways to do that. Um, but I guess for now, like if a video already exists with the same name, then don't upload and just don't let them know, sort of. <laughs> um, I don't know if I should just change this method signature, if I should just like let it be. Um, yeah, um, I think that could be that could be interesting, like just returning like a status of like what happened or something like that. that's that's basically what I would do and then oh, I'm just doing that does a video already exist with the same name just because of the way that we did the data type here because we mm -hmm. can't it's it has to be unique for strings yeah. um if we had the video object then maybe I would just be like maybe there would be an error of just like hey so like this is fine and all but maybe you want to rename your video just because it's confusing to the user success failure and <laughs> not recommended <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> case like don't do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or something like <laughs> um like this like maybe change the metadata for the <laughs> viewer's sake or something <laughs> something like that yeah so okay I um that you're a youtuber <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i remember there was like a certain point where i like started to think about interviews in like a more collaborative way and not like i'm being mm -hmm. tested and i think that mentality shift has helped me to be like, okay, like I'm just simulating what it would be like to like work with somebody. Um, and so like, it's okay to sometimes like crack jokes and like make an enum case that's called don't do it because it's funny. And like, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, I think that was like, I think like having fun with it and just thinking about it, like, oh, we're solving a problem together takes off the, like the test anxiety stress. You're like, how just, confusing would that be if I had two videos? In this exactly. Thing? Or like, if there yeah. was two videos, I guess like, you know, another, another piece of information is like the thumbnail, which is an image. And if it's the same image, which then we would have to like actually do some image comparison, maybe that, that would be uh that would be hefty, but I guess that's also like that's probably actually what YouTube is doing while you're actually uploading the, um, actually maybe not. I was gonna say, while you're uploading a YouTube video, it takes like a non-trivial amount of time because you're uploading like megabytes or gigabytes of mm -hmm. data. Um, and there are like multiple checks that you have to do in order to like make sure it's like a good video, especially in, in terms of like um, terms of service and making sure there's no like violence in your video and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what would happen on YouTube if you upload a video with the same thumbnail. I've actually never thought about that. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah. many things of so many things to trigger this. Don't. But the do thing it. though is that like I'm I'm sure that case is covered, right? And so much of engineering is like talking. It's like feature idea, wonderful, and then there's just like days of discussion and like pros yeah. and cons of doing different approaches. And like 
and uh, and I don't know if YouTube is that controversial. Well, I guess it can be if, if people are uploading controversial videos, but mm -hmm. you know, like decisions that you make in product will almost always make some subset of users unhappy. Oh, a hundred percent. No one's <laughs> ever going to be a hundred percent happy, which is like the hard thing. And so it's like, how do you make the least number of people unhappy? unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, yeah, most yeah, of the people are just going to be like oblivious. They're just going to be like, cool. Most people are not going to be like, wow, that was like the best change ever. So <laughs> how do you just make people not mad? <laughs> yeah. Life of a software engineer. Okay, yeah, basically. we can move on to, I guess, the view function. View. Okay, cool. So then, um, so then I would do like, if let video equals videos name uh or if let wait that's not how you check if something exists in a in exists in a dictionary how do you even check if something exists in a dictionary i guess you could just do that because I think you can yeah <laughs> i'm literally just like i feel like i'm like trying to access like deep parts of my brain that i haven't accessed before i think like you can see it on my face where i'm just like how do you do this because i don't remember <laughs> yeah I mean, I think this is one of those things where it's just like in if I was like doing interviews, um, I usually like make a cheat sheet of like Swift syntax. Um, and I think it's because like I still in my career and this is like, you know, I think like just based on when I was an iOS developer, um, like throughout the years, I still have way more objective C experience than Swift experience. So even though I've written enough Swift it still feels like I still default back to objective C and like Swift. Like I was actually like looking up, I was like, let's make sure that I know how to do a for loop in Swift. Cause I always forget that. Um, and so like, I know that about myself. So like, I usually write a cheat sheet of like, how do you check? How do you access things in a collection? How do you set things in a collection? How do you do control flows and stuff like that? So like really basic syntax and I actually mm -hmm. usually have it in front of me, which like I don't think the interview ever knows, but like it's there for me to glance at so I don't get stuck in places like that. Okay, next is the hardest one. Return the names of the top three most viewed videos on the channel, which requires that I need to do some math, <laughs> basically. <laughs> cause yeah, cause the data type right now is looking like a day in the life. Let me make this comment here. Um, Oops. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. A day in the life is like a video object that's called day in the life and then like whatever number and then like content. Um, and then that's basically like, like I have a dictionary full of this kind of stuff. Of course, these strings are going to be unique. So I just need to get these numbers and then sort them and then see which ones um see which ones are the highest which i believe there's like a um thinking of like the map filter sort functions on swift right now um and i think there's a way to do that uh but how would i apply that to a dictionary because i think map filter sort only works on arrays and i don't have an array of videos right now which is tricky so then instead of like wanting all of the videos to be in one data type. Cause I could also, I could just like parse the whole dictionary and just be like, all right, now let's shove all the videos in an array or like <laughs> shove all, yeah, shove all the videos in an array and then sort, and then like sort filter map that array. Mm -hmm. Or I could, since I, since I'll probably have to go through the, um, the dictionary anyways, like basically do like, uh, like a, like a, a, a different kind of sorting function. Like, I'm just thinking if I just have like, um, yeah, I guess if I, if I can just basically like compare, like I'm looking at, uh, one record and then I'm looking at the next record and then see if that records, see if that video's view count is higher than the current one. And if so, like keep it sort of thing. I think that's probably what I would do for now. This might be like, this is probably not the most performant thing, but this is the first thing that's coming to mind. So, so you're saying you'll iterate through the dictionary and then I think um, so. what are you doing with each one? And then I'm checking uh, if, so I'll probably have like three variables for like, or like a, a like a small data type of three top mm -hmm. videos with, um, with view counts. And then 
like in iterating through all the videos, if the new, if the next video that I'm iterating on has a higher view count than the three that I have, then replace Mm -hmm. the lowest view count with that new one. Yeah. But I I don't think that's actually any more performant than like putting all of the videos in an array and like sorting or filtering rather sorting. Yeah. Sorting and then taking the top three. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're about the same. I think they're both like O of N ish. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) okay so this is not quite right uh the first approach of maintaining the most viewed three elements while iterating through the dictionary is o of n um but sorting an array takes o of n log n now that being said in practice most engineers especially on mobile which is sort the thing and we were a little bit behind on time so i decided not to interrupt you Um, and I think just for like, yeah, if I was to do this, like actually in a team, um, I would prioritize like readability and understandability of what's going on with the algorithm. And because in Swift sort map and filter are just like, like everyone knows how those things Mm -hmm. work. Um, I think I would do that one instead of like my, whatever algorithm I invented. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I want other people to like me and not hate my code. (laughs) Why is it so important in production to have readable code? <laughs> um, well, I think the typically when you're working in software, you're working on a team, even if it's, and even if you're not, um, you're still working. I like to think of it as like past versions of you who, who wrote code. And so like when you write readable code, like when you jump into another piece of uh, a piece of code again, which you're always going to, because you're constantly improving on an existing layer of code. I think just like being able to understand what's happening quickly is like, kind of underrated, Um, like being able to name your like function um, names really well, your variable names really well to like really like be able to clearly think about what's happening um, helps you to like reason about what's going on easier. It helps you to fix bugs easier. It helps you to like kind of conceptualize what's going on quicker. Um, I think I learned this because like, I feel like I've seen so much code that wasn't that. And I had a lot of grief about it. Um, like one of my internships in college, I worked at like a, like an academic, like, um, research group. And a lot of those are like, they try to write really high performing code. And like, it's, you know, it's not going to be production. Like it's not going out to users and stuff like that. And so the variable names were like T and V and V1 and V2 and V3. And like, I just remember reading and I was like, I have no idea what this does. And like, and when, when code is unreadable like that, you know, you try, you typically, what you do is you still try to figure out what it does as best as you can, but sometimes it's, you just still can't. Um, like I've spent like hours debugging, like putting breakpoints to try to understand the control flow. But ultimately what I end up doing is go to the developer, which then it kind of eats up their time because they now have to explain something that they've done. They also have to refresh their memory on what they've done. And they also have to like help me understand it. And then only once I understand it, can I actually like improve on it or fix something? And so it's just like, honestly a waste of time (laughs) to like not write readable code okay so then basically what i need to do is get all the keys from the dictionary um and then iterate through all the keys to get values stick the values into a videos array and then uh, i guess sort videos based on their view count take the top three is basically what I'm thinking of doing. So this has been something that my ego has been doing uh, consistently, and it's a really, really, really good practice, um, especially in interviews, um, and a couple of reasons. Number one, doing this helps you stay organized. Um, number two, uh, doing this allows your interviewer to better understand you. And also, uh, they might even help you if they spot problems at this stage. And uh, number three, Uh, Getting this out of the way allows you to then focus on the syntax of your uh, solution after you have a high-level approach in mind already. I believe, yeah, because this takes the top three, this just gets the name and then returns. Okay, I think I've done it. Maybe not the most, uh, yeah, maybe not the most efficient, but it's like easy to follow, I think, Mm -hmm. which I pride my code in being easy to follow. Um, I even have, I even have comments talking about what it's doing. So (laughs) yeah, no, seriously, this is, um, uh, I mean, like we talk a lot in the fellowship about 
how it doesn't matter if you can write all this complex code if like your interviewer can't understand it, especially if it's a whiteboarding thing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> if you, yeah. If you can, if it's compiled, I guess it's actually lower bar for understandability because you can kind of prove through like the compiler that it works. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Okay. So I guess one thought exercise, and we don't have to uh, uh, code this out. This is just mm -hmm. kind of like um, thinking through. So what if this, um, if we wanted to optimize the runtime of this top three videos and imagine it's like, you know, this is the home screen and we're always showing the top three videos. So it's being mm. viewed a lot. Okay, so here what I was doing is trying to give Mayuko one more opportunity to try to demonstrate something. You know, we didn't have enough time at this point for us to code something new. So um, depending on how I thought the interview was going, I might just want to get a little bit more signal on how dynamic she is able to be with her problem solving skills. Um, and so this is what I was testing her on uh, when I was asking her to try to adapt or try to explain how she might adapt her code to new constraints. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we optimize the runtime of, uh, of this function? Huh. Good question. These, this is frankly the type of question that I'm really bad at in interviews. <laughs> um, let's, let's see. So yeah, this is not basically like, cause right now this is like, I think sorted and map, like these are, these are pretty efficient. I want to say, but then, I mean, sorted really realistically just goes through everything um, and like does like iterates th through things again. So it's, this is like O of 2N. So really it's like O of N um, or O of, yeah, O of 2N, which is O of N. So is there a way basically to make it like O of 1-ish or O of log? Well, I guess the, um, the sorted function, what do you think the runtime of that is? uh o of n because i i mean unless unless ios is doing something crazy oh wait no that's not right uh it's more than that i think because you have you're not just sorting you're not just sorting index zero one and then one, <laughs> one yeah. and two and two and three well, it takes more than you're one sorting path, yeah. everything yeah, yeah 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 so more than o of n is my answer <laughs> <laughs> i don't exactly know it's probably it's maybe one of the log n ones <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my oh head. God, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so funny to watch, actually. Okay. Oh, so like I thought it was actually great. Like when I was going through and I was just like trying to understand the runtime of this function, I was like, oh, it's O of two n because sorted is O of n and map is O of n. And I love that you didn't say anything because I was like, I was when I was rewatching, I was just like, oh, she let me fail there definitely want to give space for, for the person to potentially like self-correct right like you're, you're just talking yeah. through your thought process so I don't want to cor correct like the second that you say something right um, yeah exactly but I also like that you said it when you did where it's like if I was too deep in it then I might yeah, not have been yeah, able to yeah. retrace back so I was like it was like perfect and I was like able to still oh. <laughs> really reconsider like okay, what is this actually the truth? And then I had to like really kind of brute force, like if I were to implement the sorted function, what would it actually look like? It's probably not N, well, it could be N squared, um, but it's not yeah, outright it's, yeah, obvious. It's so so the, assuming it's using the most optimal sort functions, we can assume it's N log N. So yeah, yeah, um, even yeah. though it's kind of like a built-in function, it still takes that amount of time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess to make, okay. So like, I don't know if this is a great answer, um, but like just thinking about like if I was to build this in real life, um, how how would this actually change the code? And like again, apologies if not this if this is not like a real answer, but like um, I probably we wouldn't be like storing the videos in this way, like in in memory on like the client side. Mm -hmm. um, realistically, there'd be a database of videos mm -hmm. uh, with a table of like all of basically these, these things, the name, the view count, and then the content itself. Um, and so then I wouldn't have to do it like runtime on the client. Basically I would write like a SQL query of just like, Hey, give me uh, like, cause yeah, I think I can do like a select like video dot name where, uh, Oh wait, how do you write a SQL query? There's like, there's like some sort of like, get me the, the top three values. Um, based on everything in a DB table. So apparently this doesn't actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> and also like it would, it would, I guess like the filter would be like, there's multiple YouTube channels 
And so like filter based on one specific YouTube channel. So like where um, YouTube channel dot name is Mayuko and then like get the top three most videos. So, and you can actually do something kind of similar here to be honest, like in, in even in the simulated world, right? Cause like we have mm-hmm. like a class, so we could just store this pre, um, pre-sorted, right? Yeah. Um, but I guess the, the consequence of that is we might have to update um, like some of these other functions. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, and I, I think like part of what made, well, yeah, I guess that this, this is the thing that is like the most um, time intensive. I was going to say like that, like this stuff could be avoided if we didn't use like this data type per se. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, because what you could do is um, if we keep it sorted, then when we update, when we view a thing, we and it increases the count. We mm-hmm. just have to see if that now has shifted the order. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, and I see. Since it's see. sorted already, and if you're only adding one to it, it the like in practice, like it won't shift that much. Typically, you just have to compare to right. the next one, and um, you might have to swap sense. the order of a few videos in practice. Yeah, yeah. There might so be. Then- it's still O of M because the worst case scenario is every other video is viewed an equal number of times. <laughs> and so you need to move it straight to the top. Like, well, actually, and that could happen, right? Like you upload everything and everything's all zero and then you watch one if it's the last video yeah. that needs to be shifted all the way to the beginning. But um, yeah. but then you could essentially basically do like an efficient SQL query on this array. <laughs> of like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, so this whole pre-sorted thing, like, I'm trying to think like how, how, like if it's pre-sorted, then where does the actual sort happen? And is that basically just happening in the view function? Like every time, cause like you said, like every time we increment the view, um, the view count for something again, it's like, I don't know exactly what happens in this function exactly, but like if it's, if it's already sorted, then it shouldn't have to do a lot of operations is the assumption. Is that where that would happen here? Yeah, so so basically what we would do is we would go into this view mm-hmm. and and we we would or sorry, um we we'd have to update a few things. So first of all, when we upload things, so mm-hmm. we probably have like bars sorted videos and it's mm-hmm. just like video, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when, whenever you upload, you can just put it to the end <laughs> because uh-huh. it's like currently zero view count, but whenever you're viewing, you'd have to keep seeing if it's, um, more than the ones to the left that are more popular. Oh. And so you actually wouldn't like sort the entire array at once ever. You Got would just it. do it at every view. You're um, just managing the sorted videos array like manually, but you can because <laughs> yeah. you know, like, you know, exactly what's happening in yeah. the view function. I see, I see. That makes And then sense. here you don't need to do, you pretty much just need to do like this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, just get the first three. Oh, yeah. got it. Yeah, that's smart. That's definitely way more performant. Yeah, well, at least for the top three videos. And, and again, some of the runtime is being shifted to view, which is actually probably not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just in theory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could also like, uh, we could do that function like uh, while, like after we give the view, the viewer the video too, because like they're just sitting there watching it. And so in the background, like, okay, like we've gotten the video that we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can give it to you. <laughs> we can but... update your view count after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just like, yeah, I mean, it'll go up. Like, I mean, I think actually that's actually how YouTube works. Like you have to, for a view to count, you can't just watch it for like one second. You have to yeah, watch it Yeah, I think it it's for 30 like... seconds or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So like that, that's probably actually how YouTube works anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we cracked it. Now we know how to build YouTube. <laughs> Yeah. And then this video is going to go on YouTube and it's very meta. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'll be thinking true. About this when I'm uploading it. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder how this works. Yeah, um, for real. Yeah. I mean, complex systems are so interesting to figure out how it's working on the back end because they're so, I mean, we just touched not even, not even the tip of the iceberg um, for like how all this stuff works beneath the surface. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, well, I think it's a good place to wrap there for, for today. And um, tomorrow, I'm so excited. There's there's a few notes that I made. Yay, <laughs> during, okay. During, okay. I'm going to talk to you about this after. Cool. Um, 
but anyway enjoy lunch and I guess I'll, I'll see you tomorrow and thanks for staying a few minute, minutes extra with me yeah of course sounds good I'll see you tomorrow then okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> bye Sophie okay so let's talk about that interview how did my Yugo do um, so before we review my Yugo's performance, I do want to talk about something that I think a lot of people don't realize about interviews. And I've seen a lot of mock interviews online and I see what people always say is, oh, this interview was a pass or this interview was a fail, you know? Um, and the truth of the matter is that every company is super different, which means that what they are looking for is very different. Um, so the exact same interview might be a no at one company and could be a strong yes at another. Um, and the reason that this is so important for you is, if you're watching this, is that you might be training for your own interview. And I think it's important for you to know that there is a company out there that is a great fit for you. And that's not going to be every company. Um, and the goal with every job hunt is to find a company that is the right fit and try not to take the nose personally. Okay, let's get straight into it. How would my Yugo have fared at some of our favorite tech companies? So let's start with Google. Uh, at Google, I think that my Yugo would have likely gotten a no. And the reason is that Google, like most big companies, uh, cares less about practical engineering skills like iOS because their code base is so big that they assume that they're gonna to have to train you on all of their internal frameworks after you join the company anyway. And so all of my Yugo's iOS experience would have been less helpful to her here. Um, instead, Google is one of the companies that focuses a lot on algorithmic fluency. Um, and they actually are uniquely one of the companies that actually asks extremely difficult algorithm challenges. So to get a yes here, my Yugo would have likely needed to get to the optimal solutions pretty quickly, be able to analyze the runtime and uh, space complexities, and then even have time to get to a harder follow-up. Um, so if you are preparing for Google, my tip here would be to start by drilling yourself on time so that you can solve a problem of this difficulty in 10 to 15 minutes from scratch so that you have time to get to a follow-up in the interview. And once you get up to speed um, with your basic fluency, I would then ramp up to studying incrementally more difficult problems. Okay, so let's talk about a different company. Let's say we are at a 200 person startup building a so consumer social app. Let's say a company like Chief. At a company like this, I think by Yugo would have likely gotten a yes. Um, startups, especially ones that are building consumer facing applications, really appreciate product sense and leadership. And the fact that my Yugo brought up so many practical concerns around things like presenting sensible user errors, I think would have been a really positive sign in a company like this. Um, uh, since this is also likely a senior role, um, it's likely that this company needs this person to not only go to write code, but be able to make code base architecture decisions that make the code base uh, readable and well maintained. Uh, and the fact that Mayuko halfway through the interview actually made the decision to refactor the code base for readability and repeatedly bring that up as one of the things she cares about is also a great sign. Um, and honestly, I think a company like this would have not even asked about runtime complexity. So the fact that we struggled here a little bit would have likely not mattered at all. Okay, so let's go to one more company. Um, now here's an interesting twist. Let's try to go to a similar stage company, so 200 person startup, but let's say this company this time has a focus on machine learning and let's say we're talking about OpenAI. Um, so at this company, even though the company is so small, the fact that it's dealing with such uh, technically complex subject matter might mean that um, it actually cares more about algorithmic chops, um, more so than I guess the practical skills and product sense that my Yugo demonstrated really well in this interview. Um, so it's unclear, honestly, how this interview would have gone at a company like this, and I think it would have been quite borderline. Um, I'm gonna be a really tough judge and say that I would have leaned weak no, and just because it took us a little bit of time um, to get to a fully working code solution here. Um, so when if you're preparing for an interview like this, um, you're going to likely start with a very similar prep to Google, um, but because it is still a startup and it still values um, 
product sensibility to some degree, you're also going to, in addition, want to practice talking through practical engineering decisions and being able to talk about recent uh, projects that you've done and some of the technical decisions that you've made and why you made them. So that is my guess as to how my Yugo would have done at all of these different company archetypes. And as you can see, every company is super different and therefore the preparation that you should put into each company is also different. So now let's bring back my Yugo and hear more about the Formation X My Yugo Scholarship. I'm really excited to be launching the Mayugo X Formation Diversity Scholarship. This scholarship is super meaningful to me because I think that a more diverse tech industry is a better tech industry. And I like working with people from all different backgrounds because I truly think that we can make better products and a better world if more different people are making different things. And if you identify as being part of an underrepresented group in tech, this scholarship is for you and will cover the full cost for any fellow in the interview prep program. To apply, go to this link to answer a few quick questions, and we'll also link it below in the description. If you have a friend who might benefit from this, then definitely let them know about it. I'll be announcing the winner in September, and to that future winner, I cannot wait to follow your incredible journey. Thank you to Mayuko for partnering with us to get more underrepresented talent into top tech jobs. Um, if you want to see more videos like this or support more scholarship opportunities, please like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, and if you have any questions about this interview or just about the tech industry in general, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will try to answer as many as I can. See you next time.